Kage no Shadow. Full character story. How powerful is he really from anime Rumpai? Let's see what he got to say. Eminence in Shadow is one of the funniest and dumbest isekai parodies to come out recently, but despite what you might think of the series... Damn, Claire is actually so happy here. I've, like, we've seen this over and over again. Like, how many Eminence in Shadow have, videos have you been watching recently? But this panel has been seen, but this is the first time I'm recognizing that Claire is right here. She's so happy for her little brother. You have to admit the characters are the best part about it, especially when it comes to the seemingly psychotic protagonist, Sid Kagano. Yes. And Epsilon. Epsilon is very good. And since I already did a video about the secret organization Shadow Garden, I wanted oh. to take an in-depth look at the founder himself. Maybe maybe we could watch the Shadow Garden video from himself too. So in this video, we'll be exploring his character to find out his backstory and just how powerful this crazy Chunin Bio actually is. Also, this video will contain spoilers for the Eminence in Shadow, so here's a spoiler warning. How much, how much spoiler? Do you mean the anime spoilers or are you talking about light novel? And just in case, and if you enjoyed this video or- No, 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 no! Is this light novel spoilers or is this anime spoilers? Oh, this is gonna get this is gonna get dangerous. This is gonna get dangerous. I'll catch myself as soon as I feel like I'm getting spoiled. I will pause and skip a little bit. Uh oh. If you want more content like uh -oh. this? Be sure to give the video a like as well as subscribing to the channel. It helps a lot. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yes, absolutely. You're right. <laughs> to start, who is Sick Kageno? Well, before he was bringing. Bald. Bald. BALD! Incarnated in another world, he was known as Kageno Minoru in his previous life and ever since he was young, he has been inspired by TV shows, video games and other stories to become an eminence in the shadows. Someone that secretly controls and influences He who lurks in the shadows to hunt the shadow Society from behind the scenes And to achieve this goal, he dedicated his entire life study What did he do? He dedicated his entire life Learning how to read German right here, so he can say some, you know, shit. He learned how to play the piano, the Moonlight Sonata only, and he does those grip strength that, you know, 20,000 reps at school in Japan. ...to expand his knowledge and training in multiple forms of martial arts to improve his fighting capabilities while often portraying himself as a so-called mob character to be as mediocre as possible. But besides normal training, he would also attack random gangs to help improve and test his over... Yes, this 16-year-old or this 17-year-old high school student hunted down military veterans for fun to improve himself to hone himself raw skills yes and it was during one of his training nights that he witnessed his classmate akane nishino being kidnapped so he decided to follow the perpetrators thinking in i wonder if he wanted to actually save her though because i bet he just wanted to have a fight with the military veteran but did he even know that it was a military veteran i don't know i feel like saving nishina was not the focus here might be good for practice he fought the kidnappers and he eventually defeated them to free Akane before leaving. However, this experience caused him to realize the limitations of his physical- Why does he look so jacked in the manga? And one of these days on stream, we will read the manga. I think that'll be actually fun. If a nuke is dropped in my head, I'll be vaporized. Such is the limit of biological beings. So it's simple. I'm gonna just simply turn nuclear, but holy shit, he's so jacked here, dude. It's just a joke. It's a gag? Okay. He believed this knowledge and skill, so he turned to more occult solutions like magic. Sadly, magic doesn't really exist in his world, and during one of his- <laughs> I practiced Zazen under the waterfall while fasting and observing the teaching of Buddhism. I'm meditating while mastering yoga. In my search for the Holy Spirit, I prayed to God- He's even like crucifying himself right here, bro. <laughs> I stripped naked and kept hitting my head against the great tree to reach ominence- uh, omnis- uh, omniscience- I Omnisentience! Omnisentience! Oh, whatever. Anyways. Training the manga session, looks fun. He suffered from a concussion, so he ran towards a source of light, thinking that it was his magic awakening, but it was simply- Oh! I thought this scene was he knew a truck was gonna come soon, but he was kind of scared to like jump into traffic to kill himself, because the whole point of- I thought he was trying to get isekai'd. He's like breaking the fourth wall. He's like, I'm gonna get hit by truck and, and get isekai. But before I do that, I need to hype myself up. So I'm gonna hit my head against this boulder, start bleeding, start get delirious, get crazy, then jump out in traffic. I thought that was the point, but he was basically just hitting his health and then he saw the light. So he's like, oh, the awakening is near. Hey, truck and you should know what happened next. Isekai. Now, after his death, he was reincarnated. Why the fuck is that? Whoa, bro. What, what, what? I just realized again. We keep seeing the same panel over and over again, but again, I notice more things. Why the fuck is Baldi posed like this, bro? Why is he sticking his gat out like this, bro? Oh my god. And again, actually, he's not bald. This is a cul-de-sac, my bad. This is a cul-de-sac. Not completely bald, right? He still has the hair here, but this is what we call a cul-de-sac, ladies and gentlemen. And always, 
It's so polished. You can see a little bit of a, a glimmer here, right? It's, it's a very clean head. In another world, as Sid Kageno, the son of a noble family of black knights, and he would discover that the magic he seeks existed in this new world. With mm. the means to achieve his dreams possible, he spent his entire childhood following the same training routine of his previous world with some- Okay, but where did he get the slime magic from? How the fuck did he actually get the slime magic from? Some additional tasks like working on his magic and swordsmanship skills. Sid also created various inventions to help achieve yes, some of his initial this goals, though, like this the shadow bodysuit, which was yes. made using the corpses of Rimuru's family. This piece of attire- No, he's just memeing right now. He's saying he made it with Rimuru's family. No, 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 no. How did he get the slime magic? This is a very important thing that's been just importantly overlooked. It has high magic conductivity, so it can be freely manipulated by users, and it even helps to boost their overall strength. And when Sid was testing out the slime bodysuit on a bunch of bandits, he discovered a rotting- I guess we're just not going to talk about it, huh? Does anybody know? He just got some slimes and experimented on it. It's not that deep. What do you mean experimented? How do you just do that? No, it is that deep. I need some kind of explanation. You, you, oh, you, just, you just found some slimes and you just experimented. Now it's just this really incredible, flexible magic that you can do anything with. This some bullshit. There's got to be a video here somewhere on YouTube that explains Shadow's slime powers, right? There's got to be, right? Individual suffering from demon possession. Because he sensed the body possessed a large amount of magical power, he decided to perform various tests on the body and after countless experiments, he was able to somehow heal the individual, revealing it to be a female elf. Thinking she might- Like, how- No, 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 no. That part actually- No, we actually know how he cures them. It's the mana overload that makes them- That makes them into blobs, right? So, he's able to basically um, fix their body so they can actually handle the mana or at least like reduce the mana amount of mana being overloaded. I'm not really sure, but that actually does make sense. They ex it actually explained the mechanics of that. It might be useful. He fabricated a false story about her being a descendant of the three heroes that defeated the demon Diablos, how her bloodline was cursed with demon possession, and how the mm. cult of Diablos are responsible for altering history and secretly trying to revive the demon. But I but this entire plot was actually real. He just bullshit it, but it's actually real. Unbeknownst to Sid, everything that he said turned out to be true. Yeah. It was after hearing the story that the elf girl saw fealty to Sid and decided to help him eliminate the cult. Sid would then give her the name Alpha, and this was the moment that Shadow Garden was officially formed. He also took on the moniker of Shadow to really keep with the tuning build aesthetic. That said, Sid trained Alpha in both magic and sussmanship for the next couple of years, and they <laughs> sussmanship. <laughs> These subtitles are pretty funny. So it turned Alpha in both magic and sussmanship. Yes, Alpha's being very sus. Oh, these things are actually really nice. This is like the transition period between when they're like kids and they're like grown up, right? So they have their own little house. There's like an episode talking about how far they've come. You know, they're all doing cooking. Episode is like playing the piano. The Seven Shades. It's really nice right over here. Actually, where's the missing one? We have... Where's Alpha? No, Alpha's the one missing here. I'm sure she's somewhere else being a leader. They eventually rescued six other girls who suffered from demon possession as well. Even recruiting them into Shadow Garden. So if you want to know more about them, feel oh? free to check out my video. What is Shadow Garden? Who are the members? Yeah, we should watch that too. We watched an Annie's video about the power scaling of Shadow Garden. Okay, I'll definitely check that out too then. On the entire organization of Shadow Garden. But in any case, he gave them all names. Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, mm -hmm. Zeta, and Eta. And trained them as well. He even shared some of the knowledge from his previous life with the girls called Shadow's Wisdom, which would eventually... Gamma can't fight shit? No, Gamma's one of the strongest members. What are you talking about? She took out the Yotsuba, dude. The Clovers. The most important, like, mercenary mice that the, the antagonist, you know, in the corporate world and Emerson Shadow has right now, right? The only entity that can rival Mitsugoshi that's, like, rammed by Shadow Garden in the back. No, 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 man. No, the Yotsuba, they're very... That's right, Kazuha, the first leaf, right? This is a title bestowed upon the strongest member of the Yotsuba. <laughs> and Gamma took her out. <laughs> actually become quite important to the betterment of society in this world. But moving on, Sid and Shadow Garden had their first encounter with the Cult of Diablos after his sister Claire Cagano was kidnapped by them. He was able to discover her location through sheer luck, so they attacked the Cult's hideout and- He straight up just threw a fucking dart here. He straight up just throws a fucking dart on the map. He's like, oh, she must be there. And yes, she was just there. So they attacked the Cult's hideout and when he was separated from the girls, he had encountered with Count Oba, a member of the Cult. And despite taking the Diablo's drug, Oba was still easily defeated by Sid. After Claire was- Obama. <laughs> These subtitles are hilarious, bro. 
<laughs> yes, we took out Obama in that episode to save Claire. Rescued. It's Obama kidnapped Claire. Claire. Separated from Alpha and the other girls because this part, this part, you have to actually play the mobile game to figure out what they were doing because they don't really explain in the anime. I think the light novel does it right, but the mobile game actually does explain the story of what the girls were doing when they left Shadow. But essentially, I think they were just going outside, training, learning, you know, gathering funds, you know, Gamma got, you know, you know, that fucking, the H quarters above the mall and stuff like that. And everyone's like basically honing in on their own craft to um, expand the reaches of Shadow Garden. From Alpha and the other girls because they wanted to expand the strength and influence of Shadow Garden, although he yeah. would be reunited with them again when he enrolled in the Midgar Royal Spell Sword Academy. Now let's- Emphasis on mid. Iris Midgar. Let's go over the events that occurred afterwards, and even as a student, he still maintained a mediocre persona as a mob character. There's Connie, even there's Connie, Hiro and Bakugo, Jaga, true bomb background. Hero and Jaga? No, it's Skell and Poe. I thought this is Skell Etten. That's his full name. No, I thought his full name is Skell Latin, and this is Poe Tato. But they have Japanese names? Jaga and Hero? I've been lied to. I've been lied to. On characters. However, his small character status was briefly disrupted when he became entangled in the affairs of Princess Alexia Midgar after he was bribed into having a relationship with her. And when Alexia was kidnapped by the Hyorogari, skeleton okay, it, it it is the same thing as skeleton. It's just in Japanese, right? Okay, it's, it's the same thing. Okay, okay, okay. Count, he would gain more attention because he was the main suspect, but wanting to support his image as a mob character, he didn't even fight back and allowed himself yes. to be tortured. They and he didn't heal himself to be further, you know, fur further invested into being a mob character. Peter Sid in his shadow persona along with Shadow Garden launched a simultaneous attack on the various hideouts that belonged to the Count. He also found Alexia and fought against Xenon Griffey, a member- Hold up, I feel like this, so, this so, so far, this is like a summary of like episodes 1 to 5 right now. Wait, this, this is about how powerful is he- No, tell me how powerful he is! Although the battle was one-sided and Shadow ended the battle with his ultimate technique to completely annihilate Xenon uh -huh. along with the surroundings. I am Here we go! Atomic. He said the thing! So after the incident with Alexia, Sid was able to live out another one of his fantasies. You have terrorists attack your school, which definitely doesn't sound like something a same person. I feel like so far, like, hold up. This is just a summary of season one. And hold up, I see it right here. This John Smith right here, this is, this is, we're gonna, we're gonna skip this part. Thank God this got time. Okay, I'm very glad I looked at the bar right here because goddamn, if I were to watch this part, we would have been spoiled. So I think we'll cut it off right here, right? Person would want. But anyways, because the cult sealed the magic of all the students, Sid wanted to be the first casualty since it was fitting for a mock character, so he pretended to be cute while trying to protect Rose Oriana. Yeah. He also did this because he wanted to move freely as Shadow without being suspected, and once everyone left, he observed the cult members around the school. He also secretly protected Sherry Barnett. Oh, Sherry Barnett was like the main character, right? Sherry Barnett was like the main character of this episode. Even Shadow was like giving meta commentary about like the main characters being so ditzy and like dumb and just like remember her slippers, dude. Remember her fucking slippers. I'm just realizing now. One of the funniest shit was Sherry Barnett is trying to like walk around silently while there's members of the terrorists that are trying to get her, and Shadow's offering backup. But she has these fucking slippers that's just making the most fucking loudest sounds while she goes up the stairs. And she also trips constantly, bro. And from any cult members and helped her to complete building and artifact. Sherry Barnett was actually a great character. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I actually enjoy Sherry Burnett a lot. Her, the way that she was eating the chocolate was very sus, but she was very cute. Her actually backstory is really sad though. And the fact that like she despises Shadow, I really hope they're doing something with her for the future. But the fact that she's not even like back in the light novel, makes me think the author baited us. I don't know, you never know, maybe she's gonna be back, but like it'd be very on brand of Eminence and Shadow. If the author built up Sherry Barnett to be like this important character, and it's like, no, that was it. It was just a joke, just like Nishina in like episode one, it's just a joke. Then again, I hear that maybe Nishina might come back. I don't know, no spoilers, please. They countered the magic seal. With the magic seal gone, Sid and Shadow Garden launched the counter attack to rescue the students. He would then confront Lutheran Barnett to expose his true identity and manipulation of his stepdaughter Shari, but he pretended to be killed again only to return as Shadow to battle. That was so cool. That was so cool how he got instantly got defeated. Then around, there was like a mysterious man just like sitting. He was like, <laughs> the true boss has appeared. The vice principal. And although Lutheran was powered by the artifact, Shadow still easily defeated him, but yep. unfortunately, Shari was there to witness Shadow murdering. This is the, the bullshit, bro. Like, she was outside the fucking door. 
she was like, when when Lutheran or her dad was killing her her mom, bro. Sherry was ripped literally outside the fucking door. It's the most like cliche thing of like, it's so obvious that you should know, but like, she's still misdirected. I think that's intentional. Cause like, bro, you're right fucking outside the door, witnessing it happen. How the fuck did you not see it happen? Bring her stepfather. Now with the events at the school resolved, Sid later traveled to the Holy Land of Limworm after receiving a message Straight from Alpha. Straight up, yeah, straight up, this is just a summary of season 1 so far. I need to know how powerful he is though. You need to give me the comparisons of how strong he is versus the opponents he's fighting. Give me more light novel lore of like, I don't know, Mr. Sh Mr. Lutheran Barnett being like he's actually this kind of person. There's, there's this information that the anime, you know, didn't cover, so it really hypes up this character. But even despite that, Shadow was able to beat him, you know, even not using his full strength or something, only using like 7% of strength. I don't know, Some make some shit up for me you know just tell me how strong he is because i know i know he's strong well after receiving a message from alpha and when he arrived he received a coded message from beta who was in her natsume persona but he couldn't understand what she wrote however he would later receive a direct mission report from epsilon anyways so he was still able to understand the situation now during the trial of the goddess he was entered into the trial because of rose without his knowledge and afraid he might be exposed he decided to appear as shadow when he entered the arena he was able to summon aurora the wish of calamity Ooh, yes. a powerful individual it's so funny because the people that were being summoned here or like what was the name some of the names are so fucking funny they were all like classic eminence and shadow names where they're just all pun names like there was like a guy that shows up in like a baseball like baseball outfit his name's like the pinch hitter or some shit right from the distant past, the two would then battle and although she managed to impress Shadow with her fighting capabilities, he still easily defeated her and he subsequently made his exit. Now at the outskirts of the city, he was forced to enter a doorway where he would meet and imprison Aurora. He released I was so her happier. from a change. I was so happier when we met Aurora again, but at the end of this arc, I was so sad because like Aurora was like gone, you know, and I'm like, wait, she's the actual Diabolos? And then it's like, oh, I guess that's the end for her. But she actually comes back in season two. And now Claire and Aurora, they can like switch back forms. That's one of the coolest shit now. And they'll fight their way through to the center of the sanctuary in order to free her completely. When they arrived at the center, they encountered Archbishop- BALD! 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 No, Aurora is not incest. No, it doesn't count. Now if Aurora were to switch back into Claire while in the heat of action, that would be incest. But as long as Aurora is an Aurora form, that's not incest. Nah, that's not how that works, right? 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 Chip Nelson, who summoned clones of the hero Olivia to stop Sid, but with his technique, I am the all range atomic, he yes. destroyed the entire sanctuary. Explain to me what the I am the all range atomic really is, though. Tell me. Jerry, along with Nelson, and quite possibly killed some citizens of Limbo. <laughs> Yeah, we killed more citizens. They didn't get evacuated like people in, in episode 5. No, they're all dead. In the process as well. But he doesn't really care about that. So he bids farewell no. to the free Aurora. And before she disappeared, she gave Sid a final warning to kill her if they should ever meet again because she was... But we do meet again. But we didn't kill her. I guess it's different circumstances, right? Because now it's like, she's not going to kill Claire, right? It's actually, it's actually a very nice uh, resolution of... You know, if we meet again, kill me. But nah, Claire is now, you know, Aurora and, and vice versa. So it's actually nice. We can just have also her around. known as the Demon Diablos. After the events at Limworm, Sid decided to act out another one of his fantasies to be a mysterious fighter who is supposedly weak, but will shock everyone. Ah, this is, is this Mundane Man? This is Monday Man arc, right? Or is this the arc before where he just gets bodied? No, this is the Monday Man arc. This is one of my favorite arcs, right? Because now, because so far, like even before this tournament, there was another tournament where Sid had to was fighting Oriana. Remember that? And he was doing he was showing us his like background character techniques. But like that's cool. It's funny. But I want a hype moment. I want him to go all the way to the finals. Monday Man was actually a character that can do that while abiding to Sid's like chuniness, right? Because he now has a different persona, Monday Man. This is some NPC fodder looking dude, some weak, sick looking dude that's gonna just show out of nowhere, defeat everyone with minimal movements, and people are gonna be impressed. That's the new edge, you know, theme that Sid had cooking for us. So Monday Mac, fantastic character. I love the fact that he could actually, you know, fight and go all, not all out, but you know, actually flex. With his true strength. And to do this, he enlisted the help of Gamma and the Mitsugoshi company to change his appearance into Jimina Senan so that he can register for the- Jimina Senan? 
I guess this is like the Japanese like name for mundane man, right? This gotta mean like literal translation for mundane man, right? Bushin Festival. When the tournament started, he easily passed through the initial rounds and eventually reaching the quarterfinals after defeating Godo Kimeki and Quinton. <laughs> Quinton. Bald! Bald! Goldie! Fucking dude! I can see his power level. <laughs> I've never been defeated. Why? Because he's always forfeited? Or he, what did he do? He's actually never been defeated because he's always forfeited matches that were against people's stronger power level, right? That's how he had a technically undefeated record, right? And then there's fucking Quinton. Just fucking baldy. And you know what I say over and over? This is Skell. And this is Poe. Skell, Poe. Time skip, guys. Do you see the similarities? I think the anime in season two really hammered in the fact of Skell and Poe and Goldie and Quentin being mirrored when they were like running and like they would transition scene from scene during the Lawless City arc. Remember that shit? Like, there's no way the author was not pointing, like, hey guys, like they look pretty same, huh? Like, I did that intentionally, yeah. Come on, play it. Also during this particular event, Rose became a wanted criminal for assassination attempt on her fiancé, Perf Ashat, and said this Lord Perf Ashat decided to use this as an excuse to avoid his sister Claire so he went looking for Rose. With information provided by Absalom Epsilon, doing espionage, right? That's her specialty, being a spy. He was able to locate Rose and appearing in his shadow persona, he offered her the power to achieve a goal. Damn, the manga panels of the, the transfer of power from Shadow to Oriana is pretty sick. This is one of the most epic scenes too. I think that this was more hype. Like, I'm not gonna lie. The first I'm Atomic was the most iconic one, but every Atomic subsequent, subsequent after that, it kind of loses its flair because you've already seen it. Now they gotta give you variations, but it's not gonna hit the same as the first one. So now the show has to do something different to kind of hype us up. I think the I am, now, the, it's anime only, Aurora doing I am, you know, and then she was going to say all arranged because that's the only thing that she's like heard of, Sid say. But I kind of want to, in my head canon, it's like I am Aurora. That fake out was really hype to me. More hype than I am the all arranged atomic or even I am recovery atomic. Even this scene right here, Oriana getting the power from Shadow, I think that was more hype to me than the I am the all arranged atomic. I, gotcha was pretty cool. Gotcha was different. Goes, which the princess accepts. Now, after meeting with Rose, Sid was forced by his sister to watch a match from a special sitting section where he would become acquainted with Iris Midgar and the goddess mm. of war Beatrix. Beatrix. Although he later left to fight Aneros as Gemini and prepare for his next match. Aneros was so cute, especially when she started sneezing and doing the neck cracks too. Just to copy Monday Man, she was, and she took it so seriously too. I hope she comes back. Match against Iris, considered to be the greatest swordsman in Midgar. Regardless, greatest swordsman in mid. Gar. Emphasis on mid. Gemina still easily defeated her to claim victory, but the tournament was disrupted by the appearance of why Rose, does, who killed her Bro, killed what, the, what the fuck? Why does Mundane Man look so cool here? In the manga? He does not look mundane at all, dude. What the fuck? The appearance of Rose, who killed her father, the king of Oriana. And seeing this as the perfect chance to make his entrance, Jimina stopped Rose who was trying to commit suicide and revealed himself as Shadow, finally fulfilling one of his fantasies. He convinced Rose to keep fighting and helped her to escape, and before he left as well, he, he convinced her by just giving her a burger wrapper, right? He's like, you know, I'll, I'll believe whatever you do or some shit like that. He fought both Beatrix and Iris at the same time, but they were completely overwhelmed by his immense strength, showing again how insanely overpowered Sid actually is. Okay, okay, he's actually, you know, anime room is actually mentioning the power of, like, how powerful is he really, right? He's a little, he's kind of mentioning that. Having said that, the Bushin festival ended, nah. and because Sid missed class fight, he was dragged to join the expedition in hunting down the... Oh, now we're going to the Lawless City stuff, I guess. I, I know we can watch this. This is definitely part of the stuff that we've watched. Let's see what he got to say with the light novel stuff with the manga. Queen of Blood in Outlaw City. With no say in the matter, he decided to just go with it, thinking it would be a good chance to make some money. So when yep. they arrived, he left his sister and changing into shadow, he started to farm the corpses of the ghouls for- <laughs> There's nothing easier than taking gold and valuables from defenseless ghouls. They did not show us that. Because he was pickpocketing regular citizens. But I guess in the light novel or in the manga, Sid was straight up looting dead people. This is fucked. <laughs> this is actually fucked. Just dead people, all the ghouls, he's just taking money from them? Well, technically, technically he does do the I'm a recovery atomics. They're, they're all back fine. They're, they're all gonna be alive. But like, he just pickpocketed the fucking ghouls and like dead people, bro. What the fuck? The anime should have shown that. 
That's Bandicoos. insane, eh? He eventually made his way to the Red Tower where he met two of Outlaw City's monarchs, Jagannath mm. and Yukime. After quickly disposing Watchdog, he entered the tower and headed straight for the treasure room to gather as much money as he could. However, he did not just want riches, he also wanted to defeat the Queen of Blood and on his way to her chambers, he kicked Juggernaut down the tower, saving his sister in the process. He eventually found the room and after defeating the vampire this Crimson- This is different, right? This is different, right? Crimson did not get like I'm atomic silently. So in, in the manga, they actually had a battle. I think the anime does some stuff that's- Like anime only changes are actually pretty good. Like the, the silent I'm atomic, I think that was a really good way to just like just fodderize Crimson while he was doing like a casual, like uh, the, the most typical villain like monologue, right? Wouldn't even let him finish the monologue, he just killed him. After defeating the vampire Crimson, he was disappointed that the queen was nowhere to be found, so he went back to the treasure room to take more gold. When the Queen of Blood did resurrect, Shadow made a grand appearance to protect his sister and everyone, but because he was carrying too much gold, he was struggling to fight back. So he was forced to throw away the gold, but like every opponent he faced so far, he easily defeated the queen with I am recovering atomic while he but teach me, tell me why he, how he easily defeated them, right? Go into the power of like Queen of Elizabeth and how Shadow was able to overcome stuff like that. That's the stuff that I want to hear. Healing everyone present as well. Sadly, he lost all the gold, managing to only keep a small amount. And he also thought that his sister was now in her Chunimbyo face, which was honestly just too funny. Yeah, he got, he got jealous there, right? City, but he actually got jealous at looking at his sister, like having the marks. So, so wait, was he like admonishing her? Was he like, oh my god, you're so tuny and cringe too? Or was he like, god damn, I wish I had something like that too. Fuck. A sip will soon return as Shadow to meet with Yukima during the Great Trade. Yeah, the dude is pretty much doing a recap, right? The Lance Conflict. During this arc, Shadow decided to work with Yukiman to fulfill another one of his crazy dreams oh. to betray your friends only for them to find out you did it to save them. And here we end. go. This is the beginning of the John Smith arc, right? Destroying his own, you know, not Mits He is destroying Mitsugoshi, but Mitsugoshi is ran by Shadow Garden, right? And then he wants to build it back up. So the first time that Shadow Garden will actually, you know, witness defeat or fear it's through John Smith. He's, he's about to change. Yeah, we're about to stop here. We're about to stop here, and right? Shadow would take up the new alias of yeah. John Smith and he came out with a plan. And we can't watch anymore because this is now light novel manga territory. But please, go sub to his channel or like the video if you enjoyed it. You know, personally, I think I got clickbaited by the title. It said, how powerful is he really? So I was expecting a breakdown of different things that the anime doesn't tell you. For example, against the battle against Elizabeth. I wanted to maybe hear about how the power, how powerful she really was, and you know, the different kind of powers that she uses, but how easily Shadow was able to overcome. Maybe even, even explain the significance of I'm Recovery Atomic, stuff like that, right? Maybe I wanted to hear more about that just to see the difference in power. But at the end of the day, it does say Sid Kagino Shadow, full character story. And yeah, he is doing a character story. He did attach this, and I think this is just to, you know, it's, it's the YouTube algorithm, you know, clickable stuff. So I understand, but still, great video. By the way, we do these reactions live on stream, 7 a.m. PST. So I hope to see you guys there.